everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Cafe. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 29 of my modern survival island. Last episode, we were working on creating our modular power armor from the modular power suits mod. And since the end of last episode, I've done a few things over on the storage section. Mainly, I've gone ahead and upgraded three of our chests to diamond chests. Uh, this is really easy to do for those who are wondering. Uh, if you go to the iron chests mod, uh, all you got to do is make a gold to diamond chest upgrade, which is quite simply made using some diamonds, some gold, and some glass. It only requires two diamonds, and because our quarry is going so fast these days, is. We now have 53 diamonds and a whack ton of redstone uh, lying around as well So it's actually not that expensive and it was fairly cheap for us to do and gives us quite a bit more storage uh, Especially for all of that obsidian jeez. We have a ton of obsidian now uh, We should probably look into getting a cash built uh, for obsidian specifically But speaking of caches one thing that we're gonna work on uh, right at the beginning of this episode is we're gonna make a bigger cache for our cobblestone because uh, for those who watched last episode you will know that we were having way too many problems i had to keep coming into these chests here emptying them just dumping the cobblestone into the ocean it was a really bad mess so the first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna make a better cache for our cobblestone. We're going to make the reinforced cache. This thing can hold up to 160,000 cobblestone. That's four times as much as this guy can hold right now. So, all we need to do for that is get ourselves four hardened glass. I'm not going to pick it up just yet because otherwise the cobblestone will start to fill up uh, all of the other chests. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to start pulverizing some obsidian. I think we might actually already have some pulverized obsidian lying around somewhere. We do got 30. Wow, okay. Let's take all of that and then let's take, let's just just take like a stack of actually let's take 30 lead for now that should be fine uh i'm gonna stop this there's really no point in wasting the power on it uh let's put you back in there let's take our lead and our pulverized obsidian and we'll throw you in there whilst that's smelting up over there another thing that i've done since the end of last episode is i've set up yet another magical crops farm all the way over here this one of course being for the endorium crop that we made last episode and hopefully as time goes on we'll get more and more and more of those and eventually we will be able to make so much endorium it is going to be absolutely fantastic but that is not for today Today's episode today. I don't really have a central plan of what I want to do. There's just a bunch of different stuff that I want to get fixed. Uh, starting with this guy over here, I want to upgrade the cache. I then want to add a couple of things to my modular power armor, and then I want to start working on some upgrades for the ore tripling system over there because right now it's not the best. We're getting a lot of ores backing up, and uh, it's, it's it's becoming a bit of an issue. But so we'll get to that in a second. For now, let's go ahead and grab this guy. Thankfully, it does retain all of its cobblestone uh, whilst you pick it up, and even once you upgrade it to a higher tier. What do we need for the last one? We need Enderium to upgrade that last one. Hopefully, by the time my, maybe my next episode, if we leave the server on for long enough, uh, we might even have enough Enderium seeds to make the four Enderium to actually go ahead and just upgrade that to the final tier, which will give us 640,000 cobblestone. Uh, again, four times as much as the previous tier. That would be kind of awesome and would probably just mean that we could leave our cobblestone uh, for quite some time. Now, the next thing I want to work on is my power armor. So, we set it up last episode. We gave it the auto... Did we give it the auto feeder? I know we gave it the jetpack and I know we gave it the walking assist, but there's a few more things that uh, I found whilst tinkering with this since last episode that I want to add. Now, the first thing is one that so many people pointed out in the comment section, and that is this one here, the shock absorber. And basically, that's going to stop us taking fall damage. And also, uh, some people were wondering in the comment section, uh, these are not Skype sounds. It's the sound of the uh, the energy table making that noise. Uh, some people thought I had Skype running in the background. That is not the case. It's the table makes those noises. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and make the shock absorber, which is made using two wall and two servo motors. Fairly easy stuff. The servo motor, I think, is just wiring and solenoid. It is, as well as another pneumatic servo. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we still have quite a lot of wiring and solenoid. Ooh, missing 61 blue, blue pipe wire? What? <laughs> Did I request blue pipe wire? I don't... Whoa. What just happened to that? Oh, it's there. Did I request a stack of blue pipe wire? Anyway, we'll take that. We'll take some solenoid. I think seven should be enough. We need two uh, for that. Do we need two of those? Or do we need just the one? I think we might have needed two in order to make the shock absorbers. Yeah, we do. So that's four solenoid. 
I will take one, two, three, four of those. I don't think we have any of the normal servos lying around, but they are simply made with some redstone, some glass, and some iron. So for now, we will just take a stack of all of those because I assume we will be using quite a lot of those for the next part of this episode as well. Glass, we got 16. We should really get some kind of uh, automated glass system up and running so we don't have to like make the glass in the smeltery upstairs every time we want some. But for now, let's go ahead and do something like this. Let's go ahead and make two of those. Oh, we need another one of these, don't we? <laughs> uh, what are we missing? The glass. Thank you. Boom. Boom. Take one of those. Boom. Take one of those. And then I think we should have some wool. Oh, we don't have any wool, but we don't have any string either. Wow, that's great. Okay. Nevertheless, we still have this uh, abomination of a flipping... I don't want my I shouldn't need, I need to move these because th th this is not a crop island I didn't plan to have industrial hemp and dye crop just kind of sitting there on the edge uh, We also should probably find a new home for the coke oven as well because uh, all three of those don't really fit on my uh, All tripling island over there But uh, nevertheless we can now go ahead and transfer those into normal string and use that normal string to make ourselves some wool Which gives us everything that we need to go ahead and do something like this boom boom install and I'll give it like half power for now. And that should mean that if we fly and drop, eh, we take a little bit of damage. But we could definitely jump higher than before without taking damage. If I bump that up to full power, does that give us more of a, like more drop protection? Let's have a look. We bump it all the way up. It says dis distance reduction 100. So I mean, we can like fall twice as far before we take damage. Wow, <laughs> that's really good. Okay, cool. I don't think we're ever going to fall further than that, so I am happy with that for now. Uh, that is one of the upgrades I want to make. The other one is the night vision upgrade on the helmet. So this one down here, uh, not that one, this one, the night vision helmet uh, allows us to see in the dark, which is really nice. It means that we don't have to have like torches absolutely everywhere, uh, but we do just to stop mob spawning. But for the most part, we don't need torches everywhere to see. And it also means if we go underwater, we can actually see what's going on. So all the pipes that are running underwater, if we ever want to work down there, build some cool stuff, we could do that without having to just like squint our eyes and try and see what the heck's going on. So to make the night vision, we just need a control control circuit and a hologram emitter they sound pretty expensive uh, if i'm being honest modular power suit we need the hologram emitter which is two wiring one glass one of blue green and red dye with a i think you can use any glass there and a reception coil as well as a control circuit which is electrum glowstone rest okay cool stuff so uh, we've already got the wiring let's grab some lapis which should be fairly easy we'll take 10 for now we might as well just go ahead and uh, grab some of this dye seed from over here if we're gonna go and uh, make some uh, I'm going to just pick it all up, and I'm not going to be planted because I don't want it over here. What I'll probably do, uh, if we need more, I will go ahead and make another farm over there to use that. Then, do we have any Electrum lying around? We do not. However, we can go ahead and grab some gold and some silver, and you'll notice that we don't have that much gold. Now, we have a lot of everything else. The reason we don't have that much gold kind of links to my ultra-blink system. There's a, quite a lot of gold sat waiting to be processed, but the processing system is pretty slow, to say the least. So, we are going to have to work on that and make it a little bit faster than it is right now. Let's go ahead and make one of each of the colored dyes. So, we'll take you. We need red. We'll take you. And then we've already got lapis, so we don't need that. That is fine. Did I not make red? Did I just make, like, two sets of green? I want, I want red. We also need two glowstones, so I will go ahead and grab that. And then I think that's actually everything we need. We need one more piece of gold, which should be fine. Thank you. We will take you and you. And then we should be able to make ourselves one of those. We can then go and make the hologram emitter. And then we can go ahead and make ourselves the control circuit. And if we come over here, that gives us... Night vision. Nice. Look at that. So now when we walk around outside, it looks a little purple, um, which is weird. And also you can kind of see through up there. But if we go underwater, uh, again, I'm still not sure what this is, like some random chunk errors. But uh, we can go around underwater. I think you can get swim assist. Uh, let me take a quick look over here. I don't know if I'm going to make it just yet. But I think under maybe legs, you can get uh, swim assist by referring Underwater, this might be worth getting. It does require an ion thruster, so I might look into getting that uh, between episodes, but I'm hoping that allows us to kind of move through the water a bit faster, because right now, we can kind of fly through the air exceptionally fast, 
like this, especially if we turn our flight control on, we can just move seamlessly around. But then when we get underwater, we're kind of stumped, which is a bit of a pain. So uh, we should probably look into getting the water assist as well. But that is for another episode, because for now, what I want to work on in the second half of today's episode is our all tripling system. So if we come over here, you'll notice I've upgraded. And first of all, I'm going to turn the sound down because, wow, they are still really loud. Um, I've added a gold chest up here instead of a normal chest because we were getting quite full. Uh, this here is the maximum a normal chest can hold. So we were getting very close to filling that normal chest up. But these machines are so slow that nothing's really getting done. Like, you look at these. These are getting processed so, so slowly. And uh, it's not it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. Now, the good news is, uh, in the newer versions of Mechanism, the electrolytic separator does now allow for upgrades. So we can put uh, both speed and energy upgrades into the electrolytic separator to make it faster. We don't have to make multiple of them. And also... Uh, we can make all of these faster. We can make all of them faster, and we can also reduce the amount of energy they use, which in turn we can then use to put more speed upgrades in and make them faster. So, what I've done between episodes, I made 64 of these enriched alloy, and what we're going to start with is we're going to start by putting a bunch of energy upgrades into each one of these. So, the energy upgrades increase energy efficiency and capacity of the machinery. So, they increase the amount of energy a machine can hold, so this bar over here... And they also decrease the amount they use. I think at max they decrease it to like 80 redstone flux per tick. I'm not quite sure at how much they're all using right now. But it's it's more than it needs to be. So, <laughs> to make these, all we need is two glass, two enriched alloy, and some gold dust. So, what I'm thinking we do is I'm thinking we take the gold out of here. And because we've got this nice fast rotary macerator, we might as well just throw that into there. And that actually takes that down into gold dust very quickly. We should probably grab a little bit of coal and throw it into our generator. Just in case the solar panel and bat box don't have enough power to keep that thing going. I'm still not quite sure why the coal takes so long. I think it's because it's on this side, not this side. And the chest that kind of gives us stuff is over there. Uh, we should probably maybe fix that, maybe move that chest over there, or I don't know what else we could do for that, really. Uh, we probably just have to move the chest, which is uh, a bit of a pain. But, nevertheless, let's go ahead and throw you in there. You should be pretty much done, which is great. At which point, we can go ahead and make ourselves a bunch of those if we have some more glass. So, let's grab, let's just say, like, two stacks of sand. Minus 10, because we don't quite have two stacks of sand. Uh, if we take those, we can throw those into the induction smelter. Cook them up twice at once, which is fantastic. And once we've got quite a bit of glass, we can actually start working on making these. Nice. So that gets us 10. I believe you can put up to 8 in each machine. Now, I don't want to quite use all of my gold on upgrading these. And what do we need to do to make a speed upgrade? I don't think they do require gold. No, they require osmium. So for those, let's grab some of you. And then let's get that into the macerator as well. So we can start getting some osmium dust nice and quick. Did I request that? No, I didn't. Okay, osmium. Let's take a stack of that. There we go. Now let's throw that into the macerator. Cool. All right, let's take you. Let's go ahead and make a few more energy upgrades. Uh, how many machines do we have? We have one, two, three. We have four. I think you could do it in the electrolytic separator, so five. I'm not too bothered about the metallurgic infuser because right now the metallurgic infuser isn't actually part of our system, our all tripling system. So we'll say five, and right now we have 12, maybe like three in each. I don't want to... I, I, I could go off and just try and put eight in all of them, but uh, we don't have quite enough gold yet to do that. So let's... Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. That takes us up to 16. Um, if we say it's 20, ooh, that's pretty expensive. But that allows us to put four in each of these. So we'll go there. We'll throw four of you in there. We'll go over here. We'll put four of you in there. That one can take four as well. You can also take four. And finally, you can take the final four. Nice. So... All of those are getting the energy upgrades, which means they should use a lot less energy. And as you can see, you can also hold a lot more energy um, than they previously could, which is pretty cool. These guys are all now gaining power, which is nice. You can see before, they were out of power, so they're obviously using less and therefore storing more, which is good. So they should all be running uh, at maximum speed. Now... Uh, I'm a little, little dubious about using the speed upgrades because the speed upgrades do kind of drastically increase the amount of power that these machines use. Now, what we might want to look into is getting some more power over there. Uh, for now, let's make five and let's see about upgrading this guy. So right now, he is actually like completely out of power. 
Now, when I say upgrading it, one thing I did change between last episode is I made another Tesseract and put it down over here. Uh, and the reason for that is obviously because my ME system kept turning off because the generator that was here before wasn't hooked up to receive any of the wood from the tree farm. And so it kept turning off. And when that turns off, we lose half of our storage, which is not good. So... What I'm thinking is, it might be a good idea if we invest in some higher tier flux ducts and start transferring some of the energy from the Tesseract, and therefore, in short, some of the energy from the big reactor down here, from here over to those machines. Because this guy is full up on power. The quarry is using nowhere near 3.7 thousand RF per tick. Nowhere near. I don't even think the quarry... Is the quarry still running? No, I don't even think it's the quarry is still running. The quarry is done, so we should probably move that to a new location. I'll do that between episodes. But right now, the quarry, the big reactor is not doing anything. It's just wasting time. So what I think we might do is actually go ahead and invest in some higher tier flux ducts so we can carry stuff from over there to over here. Because we could use normal ones. We could use the leadstone ones, but they can only carry 200 redstone flux per tick. Uh, so we might as well go ahead and upgrade to maybe the hardened ones. They transfer 800, but probably most likely the redstone flux ducts, which are made using hardened glass and electrum, and then infused with redstone. So, for that, let's go, and let's, first of all, let's smell all this gold, because I would like to actually have some golden ingots that we could use. So I'll put those in there. Let's request some silver, so we can make a ton of electrum. We've already got the lead and the obsidian dust, we should probably request a little bit more obsidian. Uh, we'll take you. Thank you very much. We'll take the obsidian and the silver. And then all we need to do is throw both of those into the induction furnace. We do, of course, only have one at a time. We're going to need quite a lot of these. You make six at a time, but we're still going to need quite a lot to actually get this up and running. So let's make, let's do like 12 and 12 in there. We're then going to have to put some redstone into the magma crucible and have it go over into the fluid transposer. So we'll set you to blue. That one should be set to blue as well. And that should be set to orange, not blue. Uh, there we go. Then we'll put some redstone in there. That should now go over into here, which it is. At which point, we can then go ahead and start filling it up using the hardened glass that we have. Boom, boom. And boom, that gets us 42 of those, which actually should be more than enough. So we'll put those in there. And then it's pretty much just a waiting game of waiting for this to finish. Hopefully you are not running out of power. You are. That is not good. Apparently, the three flux ducts that we have here are not good enough. Probably because they're producing 240 redstone flux per tick. And the leadstone flux ducts that we have currently are not powerful enough to actually transmit all of that to the magma crucible. Uh, so that's probably why it's not working all too well. But... What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to wait until we get all of these uh, fixed up. I'm then going to go and hook those up from the Tesseract over here to these machines over there. And I'll be back in a second to start working on our tool situation. Because, again, right now we are still using an iron pickaxe. It's episode 29, and that is just not acceptable. So, yeah, I'm going to do that, guys. And I'll be back in a second. And a little while later, now that they are all hooked up with redstone energy flux ducts, I went ahead and put them all underneath. We should be able to go ahead and throw out some speed upgrades into our electrolytic separator over here. And hopefully, it will start to fill up this bottom bar here with oxygen a lot faster. There we go. Let me quickly toggle down fault here because the thunder sounds are just horrible. But there we go. This thing is actually filling up ridiculously fast with oxygen. Uh, so fast that I might actually go ahead and take some of those speed upgrades out. Because they are a little too fast, maybe. Uh, and I might actually go ahead and put some of those into here. They should all actually, at this point, be able to take quite a lot of speed upgrades. Which is good, because it means we can actually start to get somewhere. What we should probably do is put quite a lot of speed upgrades into all of these. To make them go quite a bit faster. And for that, we are going to require a few more of these alloys that we've got over here. These enriched alloys. But, I will probably work on that between episodes. Because, as I mentioned before we cut away there. The last thing that I want to work on in this episode. Is I want to get better tools than the iron pickaxe that we have right now. And by better tools, I mean the one better tool. Uh, and again, we're going back to mechanism. Because today, we're going to make ourselves an atomic disassembler. That's this guy over here. Uh, I made it a little while back. If you watch my Horizon series, you'll probably remember me making this. Um, but I didn't get to use it all that much. And it is a really cool tool. So, again, we are going to make ourselves an atomic disassembler. It's a little tricky to make, but not something that we can't handle. It requires four of these enriched alloys. We currently have 14, so that's fine. We then need an energy tablet, which is some redstone, some gold, and some more of those enriched alloys. We can go ahead and make that guy right off the 
bet, apart from the fact that we don't have any redstone, and I bet by this point the Magma Crucible has already gone, yep, and chewed through all of that. Uh, I did have to make a few more redstone flux ducts than I thought, because the distance apparently was further than 46 away, but that is fine. Let's just go ahead and request a little bit more redstone, and by a little bit, I've cost me the stack. Uh, we'll take you, thank you very much, and we'll make ourselves the energy tablet. Cool stuff. Then, the two tricky bits about this are the atomic alloy and the reinforced obsidian ingot. So the atomic alloy is made using compressed obsidian or just uh, <laughs> refined obsidian in the metallurgic infuser with a reinforced alloy, which is a normal enriched alloy with some diamond. Now, I think what we can do is actually just put one diamond into the metallurgic infuser, and I think that gets us enough to turn obsidian into the re no to make this here to make the uh, the reinforced alloy now you can get more value out of your diamond by putting it through some other machines first to actually get more than just 10 out of this and actually you can't even do that wow okay how do we get we can get compressed diamonds we can also get diamond dust diamond dust we can do in the pulverizer or in the crusher i was hoping that we could do it in the macerator that would have been a lot quicker but we do have a pulverizer and because i don't want to stop my crusher i will just stick it in there uh, you can get more value out of this by putting it through uh, by doing using compressed diamonds first uh, you can get i think uh you get a lot more in the metallurgy infuser from a, from a compressed diamond than you do from diamond dust for example if I put one diamond dust in here, I get 10. If you put compressed diamonds, then I think you get 100. So you get like 10 times more value. Uh, for us, it's not really worth it that much because we only need the one. But if you're going to make a lot of these, then it would be much more worthwhile to invest in a machine solely to making uh, compressed diamonds. But for now, this should be fine. That's going to get us the reinforced alloy. We're then going to need some of that refined obsidian, which is made in a metallurgic infuser with another diamond and some of the... Is it refined obsidian dust? on normal obsidian dust we need one sec let me let me let me check this here because there are two different types it's normal obsidian dust okay let's grab another diamond real quick i'll actually just go and grab it because it's a bit faster than me requesting it uh if we didn't have as many diamonds i would be being a little less wasteful i would have probably gone through the process of making i think it's the enrichment chamber i think we have the machine that we need to make 10 uh, make this worth 10 times more than it actually is but what i don't want to do is fill up my metallurgic infuser because we're about to use it with some other stuff anyway so we'll do that we'll put you in there that should get us the power we need to make the atomic alloy and then finally the last thing we need is a reinforced obsidian ingot which is made using another refined obsidian dust so we do actually need one more diamond wow okay my point it's becoming less and less valid as we go through here because we've just spent three diamonds when we could have spent one, but we're lazy. So <laughs> we'll put that back in there. Uh, and then we are going to need an osmium compressor. And to make an osmium compressor is fairly easy like the rest of the machines we need some buckets we need some advanced circuits we need more of these enriched alloys i might have to make a few more of those i don't think we could quite have enough uh, even more for here and then some more of the basic control circuits using osmium and redstone in the other thing we've just turned all we've just turned a bunch of osmium into osmium dust that is fine let's just quickly grab a little bit more thank you very much let's grab you and we put that back in there with this guy that should get us the atomic alloy once that's done we can go ahead and start making the next part which is the osmium compressor for that we're going to need two basic circuits which are quite simply redstone and osmium once we've got both of those i'm going to go ahead and make a few more of the alloys that we've been using so i think we might need one or two more of those we can then go ahead and make these like so we'll take two of those then all we need is two buckets which we can go ahead and actually just make right here thank you we're then going to need the block of steel we do have some steel lying around in our system i think that's the i think i don't know if it's the right steel but i think it should work nonetheless we will take you and that should be enough to make a steel block good stuff i don't know why i requested all eight uh, and then we can go ahead and do something like that get ourselves an osmium compressor at which point for now i'm just going to stick it kind of like on the end here and it will take power from this system uh, and then all we have to do is to make our ourselves the obsidian we have to take our diamond dust again into there with another one of you and then if we put that through the osmium compressor with a little bit of osmium we should be pretty much good to go and we should have everything we need to make the atomic disassembler let's see we'll take you we'll throw that in there that should make the reinforced obsidian ingot we have the energy tablet we have the atomic alloy we still have four enriched alloys left afterwards I hope we don't need more than one. Uh, we didn't need more than one osmium. Uh, and then, boom, boom, no. Let's try putting it in by hand. Boom, boom. One, two, three, four. With you at the bottom. And there we go. We have ourselves 
an atomic disassembler. Nice! So, we can go ahead and throw you into the energetic infuser to start charging it up. By the way, I did go ahead and charge all my armor up between episodes. You can see the helmet is uh, significantly lower now. I think it's because the night vision is constantly on. We need to invest in some uh, some wireless chargers from Ender.io to kind of charge that stuff wirelessly. But, we now have the atomic disassembler, which, for those who don't know, is pretty much a multi-tool of an axe, a pickaxe, and a... Um, shovel all in one so if we want to dig the ground up i don't want to do it here because that just leads to the ocean but if we want to dig the ground up it does that incredibly fast and also uh, shows the roof of the uh, the basement down there uh, you can also go ahead and chop trees down with it which is fantastic and it also has a few different modes uh, look at this just tears through wood and if i'm not mistaken let's have a look I, uh, you got slow fast vein which i think will tear through this pretty quickly oh look at that Look at that. We can tear through these trees. Oh, this is kind of fantastic. The frame rate is real bad when uh, when we try to do that. But uh, we just got chopped down a ton of oak incredibly quickly. That is fantastic. Uh, so that's vein mode. There is then slow and fast mode. I think those are the three. It's off, normal, slow, fast. How good's fast mode? Wow, fast mode. Fast mode's pretty fast. I think we'll probably like just... By default, leave it on fast mode because I don't really see much point in not having it on fast mode. Usually, whenever I want to mine something, I would like it done pretty quickly. So, if we were going down into a mine somewhere, like if we were just digging over here, I have I have a little bit of a mine going here. We can just dig pretty quickly through this, especially through cobblestone and stuff like that. This thing is kind of fantastic. We didn't really need to do all that, but I just wanted to show you how this thing works. And with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Modern Survival Island there. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time.